So our next speaker is Jessica Wickware. So she began her journey into scientific research as a high school volunteer with a research group. One of her latest projects won her first prize at the Sanofi Aventis BioTalent Challenge. So she was the top in all of Alberta. This also gave her the opportunity to represent Alberta um, at the Canadian finals, I guess, for Sanofi Aventis. So she's going to come out and talk to us about how you can create um, extraordinary <laughs> things um, from ordinary products, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. What does it take to find an effective treatment for cancer? Do we need million dollar programs and high tech instruments? Do we need to design a brand new, ultra powerful instrument to study, visualize, and treat tumors? Or is there a simpler way, hiding in plain view? Can we use the objects that surround us every day to find solutions to big problems, such as cancer? Well, yes, actually we can. And to illustrate, I'd like to share with you the project I had the opportunity to do over the past year at the University of Alberta. What we were trying to do is develop a new way of mimicking tumors and their environment in living organisms. And before I begin, I'd like to thank Dr. Ratner Durda and his research group at the University of Alberta, in particular Dr. Frederick Dice and Wadima Toshko, for mentoring me throughout this project last year. So, before I get into the project, I'd first like to explain how cancer is normally studied. So conventionally, cancer is, we put the cells on a two-dimensional plastic surface, such as a cell culture flask or a culture plate. And when we do this, the cells tend to form something called a monolayer, which means they spread out all across the bottom of the flask and form a single layer of cells, kind of like this. And so then when we look at the cells, under a microscope, we get images a lot like this. So each of these little shapes are cells, and as you can see, they're flat. They're not piling up on each other, they're not making structures or anything of the sort, they're just sort of there. So what does a real tumor look like then? Well, more like this. Tumors are 3D structures. And so when we develop treatments using 2D cells grown on a 2D surface, on a plastic surface, as models, and then we use those treatments in tumors and in the body, the human body, it doesn't always work so well. So researchers have attempted to develop, to develop different ways of um, getting around this problem. 3D cell culture, it's called. We culture cells in 3D. One such way of doing this is using spheroids. That means that we culture a cancer cell and suspend it in a gel, and we study it like that. But the group that I'm working with is using a much simpler way to study cancer. We're using an everyday object to model this disease, and that is paper. So. Can you go one back, please? One slide back. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay, so what I have here in my hand is exactly what's projected up there on the screen. It's an ordinary piece of paper. In this case, it's being coated with Teflon and patterned with squares, but we can put into these squares something that is found, it's actually an integral part of the extracellular matrix, as it's called, the things that surround the cell inside of the body, that is, that is proteins and peptides. So normally, in the body, cells are surrounded by proteins. And cells have receptors on their surface which they use to link to these proteins. Little sections of the proteins called peptides, actually. So when they link to the peptides, big changes can occur in the cell. This is one of the ways that cancer cells use to develop resistance to treatment. And that's what I studied in my project. Um, we put a, a different peptide into each one of these squares, and then we checked to see if resistance was developing when they were adhered or sticking to the peptide. So that's what I'm showing up here. We measured this using an instrument called the gel scanner, and we were tracking the intensity of cell binding to the peptides. Um, so as you can see here, uh, these are all different peptides. The dark circles mean that there are lots of cells sticking to the peptide very strongly. Gray circles mean that there are a few cells sticking, and white, very few. So if we measure the intensity of cell binding to the peptide before, and then after treatment with the drug, we can see whether resistance is occurring. If there's very little change, that means that the cells are still alive and sticking to the peptide. And we can also look inside of the paper and see what the cells are doing using a very powerful instrument called the confocal microscope. And that's the image down here. Uh, in this particular case, we dyed the cells green, so all the green spots are cells. The blue is the paper background. 
And then we were looking and we saw that the cells were forming structures. They were, they were sticking together and forming clumps, kind of like they do in the body. So that's how we can model the environment around cells, in particular tumors, just using paper. Now, how about modeling the tumor itself? Do any of you guys do origami by chance? Or have you done it before? A few of you, yes, okay. So origami, of course, is taking a piece of paper and folding it up. Lots of times people make birds, flowers. That's not what we're doing here exactly, but something similar. Because when you take a piece of paper and you fold it over many, many times, you end up with a very stiff stack of paper. And then when you put cells into that paper, they spread out and they form a structure, and they much like a tumor. So why is this important then? Well, in a real tumor, the cells on the outside of the tumor are not the same as the cells in the center, in the core. This is because they have exposure to different levels of nutrients, to the oxygen around, and to the drug if the tumor is being treated. So if we have the cells in different layers of the paper, you know, certain cells here, some cells here, they will also have different access to those same things. And so that's how we can actually mimic the dynamics and the structure of a tumor in a piece of paper. So by finding new uses for everyday objects, we can actually simplify the process of discovery. So while we still may need fancy instruments to look inside of this piece of paper and see what's going on with the cells, the fact that we can use something that can be found literally anywhere to model a disease as complex as cancer, well, that could make finding new treatments so much easier. I have a challenge for all of you today. Take a look around you and see what you can find. Because the possibility for extraordinary innovation and discovery dwells in the very ordinary objects that surround us every day. By opening our minds to creative possibilities and new solutions to old problems, by looking with new eyes at all that surrounds us, we can reimagine, recreate, and redefine the world around us in a way never before possible. Thank you. Thanks for that.